I actually Googled space monkeys before I before we did this episode, mm-hmm. and they were in these like weird <laughs> suits. Yeah, they like, strap the monkeys in. Yeah, well, they cover them in electrodes in these weird suits, <laughs> and that's and they shot them up. Space, no longer the final frontier. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the episode of Laughing Historically. I'm Nevin Warner, and I'm Brandon Warner. The end of the shuttle program is has reached us, uh, but we thought we'd talk about how it all got started from the very beginnings of With the space monkeys. program <laughs> in around 1947 after World War II ended. It's the Cold War, right? Yeah. We start launching different things into space. And anything. The, really, anything, really, it's practically anything they can find. We start launching fruit flies, moss seeds, little stuff. Obviously, these flies aren't trained to do anything. At no, all. they're just. But they all, but they survived. <laughs> they lived. That's but good to know. Lived. That's good to know. We decide to switch to monkeys because now that the space station is it's ramping up, we want something better to shoot up in there. So why not primates? Why not primates? Okay, because <laughs> they're closer to us, and we can whatever happens to them will most likely happen to humans. Now, are these trained monkeys? Can they do anything? Or the do monkeys they just were trained. Throw feces at <laughs> controls. They what do they do? <laughs> the monkeys were trained basically to sit where they were for. A long periods of time. That's it? Yes. And the first monkey astronaut was named Albert. And this was in 19... After Albert Einstein? Maybe. Okay. Could be. Okay. Could be. <laughs> uh, and Albert traveled 39 miles up in the air on a V-2 rocket. That's, that's pretty scary yeah. for a monkey. It's practically a missile. It's not really anything. <laughs> that's what this monkey was thinking. Yes. Uh, he died of su- suffocation. He died? Yeah, he never made it to space. I thought it. the whole point of sending things up is to simulate like a human so they want them to live. Well, because baby steps. First you want to get the, this, the rockets up, and then you work on getting them back down. <laughs> so, we accomplished the first part here, people. We got the first part. Yeah. Up. Um, now, the second was Albert the second. And the- <laughs> Very creative names. <laughs> yes. Uh, his uh, V2 rocket made it to space. Okay, so this uh, one made it this time. 83 miles, which is just past the Carmen line, so it's technically space. So you can, like, you barely see that. Just yeah. barely space. Yeah. Um, he died from a parachute failure. So they're getting closer. <laughs> wait, wait, the rocket was par- or was the monkey in a parachute? How did this? Uh, it was the capsule was in a parachute. Oh, that'd be pretty haphazard. <laughs> Albert the third. Are they all Alberts? Uh, he only made it 35,000 feet before his V2 rocket exploded. It's like Challenger, kind of. Okay. <laughs> Albert IV, however, made it to space, but another parachute fell here. Now, why don't they fix the parachute? <laughs> no. <this> is- <laughs> How many times did the parachute not work in- before they fix it? Instead of fixing the parachutes, they decided to switch rockets to... <laughs> <laughs> what, what's cheaper? Uh, fixing a parachute or just using another rocket? Switch to the, uh, these Arab rockets. Okay. And Albert the Sixth, who had 11 mice crewmates. Was he commanding them in the I vessel? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, I don't know what their different jobs were. One was navigation, the other one was, uh, was weapons. One was manning a robotic arm. Yeah, and they survived the flight. Because of the mice. Because of the mice. It's because of the mice. It, it, all these monkeys failed. Yeah. <laughs> they landed in New Mexico. Because it took a while for the scientists to find them, most of them died in the heat. Only 11 mice survived. That's sad. They, they made it all this way and... They didn't make it to space, though. <laughs> when they looked at their like the readings, they are like, Oh, we have survivors! And they never made it to space, so it didn't really count. Meanwhile, the Russians were having a ton of success with dogs. Ton of success with dogs. So we failed monkeys. They had success with dogs. Yeah. In 1957, they launched Leica, who was the first dog into orbit on Sputnik 2. Okay. Um, not the original Sputnik. The second Sputnik. The second Sputnik. Right. Uh, she did not return, but she made it to space into orbit. Okay. So that's uh, better than our primates not even making it. Yeah. Into space. And ten more dogs would follow into space. Okay. The dogs are kind of sad. I'm not going to get into much into the Russian dogs because they did weird stuff experiments on them and stuff they would launch dogs over and over into space same dogs like literally the same dogs they come back survive and they put them right back in a rocket really and shoot them back up yeah these they- dogs are custom to space yeah they're racking up miles <laughs> actually two dogs would hold the record for time spent in space and it wouldn't be broken by humans until the 70s wow may 28 1959 
Okay. We get the first hot shot monkey astronauts. Hot shot? <laughs> I mean, like like Tom Cruise Maverick, like Top Gun. Yeah, these monkeys like, with the a- aviators on. Mm-hmm. These monkeys <laughs> were the real deal because they were the first that completely survived the trip, round trip in. So space. they did it. Abel and Miss Baker were their names. Okay. And they flew up into space, and then their rocket slammed into the ocean. The parachute barely worked. But the parachute again! <laughs> How many times does parachute have to fail? <laughs> These monkeys! <laughs> the geniuses in NASA, they can't fix the parachute! So they slam into the ocean, they go out there, they find they both survived. Both of the monkeys survived. They immediately fly them to Washington, D.C. <laughs> I just wish was flying for these monkeys! Yes. For a press conference. Okay. Like they asked them questions. The reporters are asking the monkeys <laughs> questions. How did you feel about your journey? Yes. <laughs> and they um, became celebrities. Abel, she died a couple of days later. Was sad. it? Was it from? It journey? was. It was from surgery to get the electrodes out. Oh, so that's it, sad. It's sad. But they stuffed her, and you can see her in the Smithsonian. <laughs> they stuffed her. <laughs> you know the, the Smithsonian, Washington D.C. She's there in the Night of the Museum too. The monkey in that movie. It's, it's her, That's Abel. really? For, yeah, the first monkey in space. And Miss Baker would actually live for 25 years later. Did you sign autographs? Well, <laughs> little children would write her apparently 100 letters a day. Wait, 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 wait. listen here. Why are, the, why are the teachers encouraging these kids to write these letters? Like, the monkey's gonna correspond back. Like, yes. one day, they're getting mail. Thank you for writing me your letter. Please uh, write to NASA to fix their parachutes. <laughs> <laughs> they shouldn't be encouraging these kids. It's very sad when kids get letters back from yeah. their role models. <laughs> from and the, the, the role, role models. models. Yeah, role <laughs> role models. <laughs> there were even a fleet of backup monkeys that never made it to space. They were completely trained. I don't know whether it would feel good for the monkeys or bad for the monkeys that they didn't make it to space. I don't know how we should feel. It's like the Apollo 13 of monkeys. Yeah, these are the gym level. <laughs> the gym level monkeys. monkeys. <laughs> They saw it, but they didn't get there, guys. They got so close to space. <laughs> and in 1961, NASA launches Ham, the chimpanzee, uh, in the Mercury capsule. Okay. And he's kind of the fam- like the really stereotypical famous space monkey, although he's a chimpanzee. The saga of Ham, trailblazer in space, is the story of a three-year-old chimpanzee serving the cause of science. The little chimp has been carefully selected, thoroughly examined, and patiently tutored to help mankind discover whether living creatures can survive travel in space. Because he would, they trained him to, to do things in space. Is this the monkey that pushed the button and the banana came yeah, out? Yeah, he had levers. Yeah. The monkey pushed the levers, a uh, banana came out, right. and some water came down. And if he didn't do that, he would get electric shocks. So anyone get water either? No. So if you watch, <laughs> the, you watch the video. He's just frantically hitting the levers. <laughs> he doesn't want to get electric shocks. It's awful. It's really awful. <laughs> they launch him up in the Mercury capsule. He comes down, right? And After a severe electric shock yeah, therapy, a ton of press gets out, and then three months later, they launch Alan Shepard. So, you think of your, your Alan Shepard, right? Yeah. And they say, all right, Alan, see that monkey over there? <laughs> and he's like, ah, ah, they're all electro shots. And Alan Shepard's like, what? See that that one? <laughs> that monkey survived. <laughs> and he's like, oh. <laughs> so, in three months, we're sending you up into space. And then forget about all the other monkeys that didn't make it. He made it, so now you're going up. <laughs> this monkey's like squeaking. It's like, ah, ah, don't go, Alan Shepard. <laughs> Humans would follow, and basically from here on in, after after Alan Shepard, lots of animals would go up, but they were always going with humans. They weren't going alone. Without uh, these animals, these monkeys especially, we would never know the effects of space. Because you think about it, at that time, they had no idea what space would do to no, a living thing. No, no, yeah. This was so unknown, there was only one way to get humans into space, and it was using animals. So, you know, you really have to salute these space monkeys. Thank you.